when we feel disturbed when we feel miserable we blame the externals it's a natural human response so and so is bad so and so said this so and so said that but we forget what the vedas tell us the whole world is the veritable form of god God Krishna says in the Gita everywhere is Sri Krishna So when this world is the form of God how can it be inauspicious how can it be awful The only thing that is coming in the way is our own mind that is why there has been a saint called ravi das whose words are very famous in india jo man changa to kathauti mein ganga this ravi das has been a very astonishing saint in the medieval bhakti period his story is very intriguing in the 15th century in india in the beginning of the bhakti movement was a great devotee of lord ram called swami ramanand he has also been the guru of kabir das so swami ramanand had one brahmachari disciple who used to go and do bhiksha beg for alms he would bring the rations the grain etc which then swami ramanand would use to prepare his bhog for the lord and guru ji had told that brahmachari that only take arms from the house of a vaishnav of a devotee so as this brahmachari would roam the streets one shopkeeper who had a grocer's shop would request please come and take from here and he would refuse One day it was raining he took shelter at his shop and this shopkeeper found this as an opportunity one of his customers was very opulent called raghu charan so this raghu charan very opulent he never had any children and he was told by an astrologer that if you offer food to guru ramanand you will be blessed with a child guru ramanand was not prepared to eat anybody's food except that of devotees so he had given his rations to the shopkeeper that please arrange to give this to gurudev he will get my food now the opportunity presented himself the shopkeeper he gave the rations the atta flower to the brahmachari who took it to his guru and the guru prepared the food to offer to his lord and he came to know that the lord is not taking it something wrong he said you have not got this from a devotee now the brahmachari opened up gurudev said all right then for this transgression you are going to be born next time without all these privileges so that brahmachari got born in the house of the same raghu charan from whose house this food had come so that was ravidas and this ravidas his father when he was growing up he had a business of leather getting leather tanning it making shoes repairing them and he was very wealthy so ravidas as he grew up the parents they realized that he has got no interest in the world they said one way to do it is to get him married they got him married he was a young man and now he got the keys to his father's treasure chest So what he would do is that he would use his father's treasures and give them in charity. The parents came to know. The father said, "Look, if you continue like this, I'm going to throw you out." 
So they threw Ravidas out of the house. Ravidas said, never mind. Jahi vidhi rakhe Ram, tahi vidhi rahi. He had a very saintly nature. Whatever position God wants to put me in, I am willing. His wife, he was fortunate enough, had the same mentality. Both of them started residing in a poor little hut and in the center of Kashi, on the main crossing, he opened his business. He said, the only thing I know is how to stitch shoes. That is what I learned from my father's business. So he was stitching shoes out there. Now slowly, slowly, his fame spread far and wide. People recognized that he is a devotee. One Brahman used to go to Mother Ganga every day for worship. And he would come and meet Ravidas and say, come along with me. And Ravidas would just brush him aside. Say, jo man changa to kathoti me ganga. If the mind is clean, then in my little pot, the Ganga resides. So as a cobbler, he used to have that little pot which he would use in stitching the shoes, the water. He said, the Ganga is right here. So one day, that Brahman priest insisted, you have to come and worship Mother Ganga with me today. And Ravidas said, do one thing. He took two bananas, offer these to the Ganga. So the Brahman took the two bananas, he reached the Ganga, he did his worship and he took the two bananas and he found a hand coming or so he felt a hand coming from the river and accepting the two bananas. What? This has never happened ever before. So much of devotion, the Ganga came itself to receive. He was just thinking about it when the hand came again and gave one angan, one bracelet that give this to Ravidas. So he took that bracelet and he saw, my God, pure gold embedded with diamonds. So his mind got polluted. Why give it to Ravidas? Why not keep it myself? He went and showed it to a jeweler. The jeweler said, Wow, this is amazing. He said, I wish to sell it. At the same time, the wife of the Nagar said, the biggest businessman of Kashi landed up. She said, I'll buy this for a thousand rupees. She purchased it. The Pandit got his thousand. She took it to the king's palace. The queen saw it. And the queen said, sell it to me for 5,000 rupees. She got it for 5,000. The king said, my God, such a tangan. I need to see a second like this. How do we get the second one? She asked the wife of the Nagar Seth. The wife of the Nagar Seth asked the jeweler. The jeweler asked the Pandit. So Pandit now was caught. How to produce the second one? Kangans will always come in a set of two. And he has given one, it has gone to the queen. Now how to get the second one? So he went to Ravidas. And he said, Maharaj, I made a mistake. This is how the Ganga offered a Kangan to you. And instead of giving it to you, I sold it to the jeweler. But now they need a second one. And Ravida said, really? All right then, here are two more bananas. So he said, all right, then let me go to the Ganga and get it. Ravida said, you don't need to go to the Ganga. I told you, jo man changa, to kathati me Ganga. If your mind is pure, you have the Ganga right in the pot. At the same time, they found a hand coming from there and giving this Kangan. And now he got his second kangar. He went and gave it. It reached the king. The king, he became a devotee of Ravidas. 
So Ravidas has been such an astonishing saint. He continued to be a cobbler all his life. And great, great kings around were his disciples. So one day, the king thought, let me go and meet my guru while he is doing his uh, puja, etc. So Ravidas was sitting there. He was worshipping a shaligram. Now the king arrived there. And the king was looking. Ravidas took a little water out of his pot. And he said, O oh king, this is the pure Ganga water. Jo man changa to kathati me Ganga. Here, take charanamrit. The king did not want to show that he is irreverential. But in his mind he was thinking that this cobbler has given me this water. Nevertheless, he took it. And then instead of drinking it, he put it like this. Like sometimes, you know, when you go to Shankarji's mandir and the shivling, etc. It's all got so much of water there, which is smelling and stinking because of various things that have been put in. And the priest, he says, okay, come and take some charanamrit. And then people think, my God. So they take it and put it out here. So the king, he took it and put it here. And then later on, he discovered there's a stain on his kurta. The washerman, he touched that spot to clean and he put it in his mouth. And all of a sudden, he felt like got an electric shock of divine bliss. So he started chanting Ram, 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 Ram. When he came back with the cleaned kurta, the king asked him what's going on. He said, O oh king, there was a spot out there and little remaining drops of water, I took it and put it in my mouth and after that I am not able to stop chanting the name of Ram. The king realized the grace of Ravidas, which was meant for him, had been received by this Dhobi. So the statement of Ravidas got proved. Jo man changa to kathati me ganga. That is exactly what Kripaluji Maharaj is saying. That look in your sadhana, your primary goal. Whether you apply lipstick or not doesn't matter. <laughs> Whether you put hair oil or you put tilak etc. It doesn't matter. But the most important thing is you must cleanse this mind. That is why, from the Vedic perspective, the doer of our activities is the mind. If in an action, the mind is not involved, that action is not given importance. Ram Krishna Paramahans, he went for a Rath Yatra. In Kolkata, it was to take place. He reached a few hours late. And Lord Jagannath's wrath had already gone by. So Ram Krishna Paramans asked a shopkeeper on the route, Sir, has the wrath of Lord Jagannath passed from here? That shopkeeper artist was busy painting. And he said, No, not at all. The neighboring shopkeeper told him, What's wrong with you? Such a big Mahatma and you are telling him lies. A few hours ago, the Rath went by. The artist said, I never saw anything. You never saw anything, but you must have heard the Dhol Janj Manjira. They were blasting away in the Kirtan. He said, I never heard anything as well. Ram Krishna Paramahans was astonished. He sat down there in meditation and he realized the shopkeeper is telling the truth. He's understood the artist had been so absorbed in his work, he had not realized. He may have seen with his senses, he may have heard with the ears, but it did not register because the mind was elsewhere. That is why even in the world, it is your intention 
according to which a crime is considered if you kill someone it's a gross crime you can even be hanged for it but here is a man he has killed another and he is brought to court and the judge says did you kill him yes your honor so you need to be hanged your honor you can't punish me why can't i punish you my intention was not to kill i was driving on the right side of the road at the proper speed my eyes were on the road in front my steering brake everything was perfect this man suddenly came and fell in front of my car what can i do if he is able to prove there was no intention to kill no purposeful negligence of any kind he will not get even the slightest bit of punishment the last taste the menagery the intention was not there and if the intention was there three decoits they are sitting under a bridge and they are conniving an attack on the bank they have not done anything as yet the police gets whiff of it they come and grab them now it is proved that they had intention they say we never did anything you never did anything but the intention was there you are going to be punished that is why our scriptures say mana kritam kritam loke na sharira kritam kritam the punishment of the karma is not according to the act but according to the mind so maturity means to stop pointing fingers for our feelings to grow up emotionally means to always take responsibility for what we feel we are always focused on changing circumstances you know if the corona comes to end i'll be such a happy person and then god will have another corona that's waiting for us <laughs> so it's better to learn to be at peace whether there's a corona or a corona to hell with both of them you learn to control your own mind so when the mind is cleansed what will happen this maya devi will never be able to disturb us kaam krodh lobh moh they will all wrap up their bundles and go away